WHPC HD Garden City. Available anytime on your smart speaker. Play WHPC. And anywhere on iHeartRadio. Ninety point three WHPC. You've got uh, from the press box right here every Monday nine a.m. to ten a.m. Part of the WHPC Sports Talk family Monday through Friday four p.m. to five p.m. and then of course uh, also on Tuesdays ten p.m. to midnight. We're on every Monday nine a.m. to ten a.m. I'm Rob Leonard. And joining me, of course, is award-winning sports writer and yes, my brother. Tim Leonard. Hello, brother. How are you? Good morning, brother. By the way, I signed your name yesterday to Mom's uh, Valentine's Day card. Okay, that's fine. Because, you know, I know how to do the Tim Leonard T and the M. There we go. It's a very, for those who don't know, it's a very special. He writes a big T, and then he has a very non focused M. That's me, big T. Big T. So I, I wrote, you know, when we gave the card yesterday, I, I turned it to Tim Leonard for that five seconds. Good job, bro. And my life was better because of it. Absolutely. Anyway, uh, if you'd like to comment on anything we're talking about or if you have your own topic, please give us a call at 516-572-7440. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, let's start off with a topic that last week uh, people were talking about since the Steve Cohen deal is not happening, at least as of right now. But it might happen. We, it's still it could it's happen. still there. It's still there because things have changed since uh, yeah. since the the, the Will Ponds and and Steve Cohen uh, right. decided to right. uh, decided to say no. Well, A Rod was the big uh, the big person to be mentioned last week about possible ownership of the Mets. Um, we should say that he does. He's rich himself. Uh, first of all, quite second quite of all, his fiance <laughs> is even richer than him. Uh, Jennifer Lopez. Uh, yeah, she's got a few bucks too. He also is now on Shark Tank. So occasionally, occasionally, not as a full time guy. No, but he is there. And, and Mark Cuban, of course, owns the the Dallas Mavericks. And Mark Cuban did try to buy the uh, the Cubs a few years ago. Baseball, baseball didn't want him. Yeah, so they so. didn't want him. So that didn't happen. But technically, you know, he has some money to play with. <laughs> He's got more than more than some, <laughs> and he could be a partner in it. You know, also a possibility. And so that is a possibility. And then, of course, um, A-Rod's other rich friend is Warren Buffett, who they're very good buddies because A-Rod humbly went to uh, Warren and said, hey, how do I invest my money? And, and Warren's like, well, you know. Hey, Warren, I, how, do I, how do I become a rich guy? Even and though Warren, he's already rich. Warren said, eh, you're already rich. And, and A-Rod said, I want to be richer. Yeah, well, you know, the thing about Warren Buffett is he loves three things. He loves small-town newspapers. He loves trains, and he loves Coca Cola. So, well, you know, yeah, the, those are those are three decent things. Yeah, so KO for Coca Cola. I don't know about the other ones, but he supports he supports the. Uh, I, I don't know what does business. that mean. KO for Coca Cola. That's what the the sock symbol is. If you say so, I it is. No it is. I'm what, just telling. What, you. what an obtuse thing to bring up, brother. Thank you. So anyway, that was the big, big noise this week about A Rod. Now we did, one thing about A Rod, and, and you've brought this up many times. A Rod is really a baseball guy. He likes baseball Loves a lot. Baseball, not not it, it likes is such an understatement, brother. He lives and breathes for baseball. He he, he I, just I, didn't play it. I told you no. He did. What do you mean he didn't play it? I'm saying he didn't just play it. Meaning that he just didn't play baseball. He likes baseball. He, Some he, people he, can play baseball, but they don't care. He know? lives for the game, brother. Yeah, that's, they don't that's follow. What it is. They don't follow everything like you know other players. The story. The story. I think I told you the story a few days ago when we were when we were discussing the, the show as we do every week. Um, a Rod. The story goes that A Rod was went over to Derek Jeter's house. I don't remember where it was. It was in New York. It was in Florida. Where, wherever it was, he sits down. He grabs the remote control, flips on the TV. Starts flipping the channels and says to Jeter, hey, Jeet, where, where's, where's the baseball package? And Jeter apparently looks at him and says, I don't have that. What are you talking about? And, and A-Rod couldn't believe it. Was stunned that Jeter, Jeter, a professional ball player, would not have the baseball package. Considered it something that he could not do without in his life, A-Rod. Right. 
So he was stunned. But that that is that is how obsessed A Rod is with baseball. Here's one. Here's a guy who for for how many years was one of the, one of the, one of the best, if not the best, player in the game. And all he wants to do on his time off is watch more baseball. Well, also one thing about A Rod that the the Major League Baseball might have a problem with him buying a team. It's one thing to comment in, on Fox Sports and everything or Fox. Uh, but he was suspended for a year for for, for yeah, that's violations. All in the past. Eh, that's all in the past. Violations for uh, steroids. So he's not, he's not going to get into the Hall of Fame. So that's 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 another part of his punishment. I I couldn't. I can't see why Major League Baseball. Would Eventually have an issue. he will. Eventually he will. Maybe, but well, not. I don't. I don't know because the reason I say I don't think he will is because he actually admitted to using steroids. Barry Bonds and, and Roger Clemens have never admitted to using steroids, even, even though the prevailing opinion is that both not not only used but abuse steroids. So and just look at uh, but, Barry Bonds' head. Yes, but neither one of them has e- ever actually come out and said, "Yes, I did that." Right. Right. So, and but A Rod did come out and say it, and he that's why he was suspended for a year. Uh, because, well, maybe that's why he does get in eventually because hey, he admitted it. I don't think so. I right. think I think because he did admit it, I think that's going to cost him his, his spot. I, in the I ball. think I think every, I think baseball fans know he's one of the great players of all time, and and would have been with steroids or without steroids. But I think that. You know that that is going to be part of his punishment, along with that one year suspension. Is all right. You know, I'm I'm curious to see because it's it's it, you know it's, it's still it's still another what year or two away um, <clears throat> when A Rod first comes up on the ballot. Right. I'm curious to see how many votes he's going to get. I'd say fifty percent. I don't. I'm not even sure it'll be that high. I think. I think it's going. I think it's going to de- going to depend on how many deserving players there are on the ballot. Because this year it was kind of a crowded ballot, right? But obviously, you know, Derek Jeter got all but one vote. So I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely curious because and and Bonds and and Clemens, their their totals are growing little by little. And both of them, I want to say, have two more years left. I think I, th- I think this year was their eighth year for both of them. But but you know, are 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 either one of them going to get to seventy five percent? And and. You know, but I, again, I don't think this is going to be an issue. And I want to talk more about you know A Rod and, and the potential of buying the Mets because apparently, right. apparently he was a big Met fan growing up. I, I didn't know that. I was unaware of that because I thought he said he was a Yankees fan when he came to the Yankees, or maybe maybe he's just saying. No, whatever, I remember. Whatever. I remember he, he said he was a Met. Apparently, fan. apparently Keith Hernandez was a big guy for him, um, and and those Met teams that Hernandez was on obviously were very successful. Uh, they 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 won the World Series in '86. Probably should have won at least one more, if not a couple more. Well, yeah. Um, but you know, though, apparently that was his team growing up in South Florida. Um, obviously, you can no matter how much we talk about how much money A Rod has, he doesn't have not nearly enough money to buy a major league franchise. Not by himself. I mean, it's going to be like um, not even with J Lo. It's yeah, it, it's, it's going to be like uh, Jeter's deal with the the, the yeah, Marlins. You that's know? and that's what you A-Rod, buy five percent, but he runs because you you want a guy like Jeter. You want you want face. you want you want somebody like Jeter to be a face of the franchise. Yes, uh, but but there you know there becomes the other problem is do you want a Rod to be the face of the franchise? Given like you just said about the steroids uh, suspension and and whatnot, is, is he the guy you want to be the face of the franchise? And I don't know. I don't know if the Mets would want that only because a Rod is so associated with the Yankees. Do they want that guy as the face of their franchise? Now I will say this. If I had to pick a guy to be in an ownership capacity and somebody who, who to know the game, I'm picking A Rod over Jeter. Yeah, A Rod knows baseball. There's no, there's no two ways about it. I, well, I, hey, I, I think his baseball IQ is phenomenal. I, you just have to watch him um, on on the Fox baseball games when he when he's up there with uh, you know big big Poppy and the rest of them. He knows his stuff. Yeah. You know, and, he, and as much as the other guys might be joking around on occasion, he doesn't really joke around. He's, no, he's A Rod, Rod doesn't clown when he's when he's talking about baseball. Yeah, so I, 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 I'll give him credit. Frank Thomas I wouldn't mind. Rose. I wouldn't mind if he bought the Mets because I would assume that the Mets uh, would be a better team under him. I also think this year, brother. I mean, it's going to be a tough division. I think uh, NL East is going to be the toughest division in baseball. But if the Mets get off to a good start, unlike last year, well. You know, this could be a much better team because hey, they won ten games over last year. It's like it's like I posted on on the from the press box Facebook page, bro. The Pakota rankings came out today. Don't ask me what Pakota means; I have no idea. But they that is the the uh, the, the community that that assesses each team and ranks them and and predicts how many wins they will get. They had the Mets winning the National League East with eighty eight wins this year, right? 
And it's going to be a tough division. It's going it's to be, going to be tough. There, there's going to be a lot of teams battling and knocking each other out. And you know, no, no, they, they play 19 games apiece against each other. Nobody nobody in that division is, is going to go 16-3. and three, No, there's, there's uh, no except, dominant. Except against the Marlins. But right. the Phillies, the Nationals, the Braves, and the Mets – they're they're going to be battling. It's going to be there's going to be a lot and, of uh, a and lot you know of what? ten and nines there. You know, um, Joe Girardi, I think is going to be very focused this year as the Phillies manager because I think he wants to just sh- shove it in the Mets' face because the Mets really, let's be honest, the Mets should have signed him as the manager. And they did as, as it as it turned out, they, they really should have. <laughs> with Carlos Beltran and all that. Well, uh, Brody didn't want to see you know be the junior guy. You that know, was why that's exactly. Why. So that's the problem. All right, anyway, brother. But back to a Rod. Uh, he's going to have to put money people together. That is that is his his goal, his quest. Uh, he I, I don't even know if if J Lo no, wants Joe, to get no, involved. No, 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 she might. Who no. knows? You, yeah. you, you say Five, no. You ten percent maybe. But you, no, not even t- not even ten percent. What are you kidding me? Five percent. The Mets. The Mets for eighty percent of the Mets. The Mets v- were valued at two point six billion dollars. Right. So eighty percent is, that for, is that. that for the eighty percent or for the total? I, I, as far as I know, that was what the franchise was valued at was two point six billion. So so eighty percent of that would be won, about I've, two. I've 2. never 2. heard because if it was two point six, I would I would say the Mets is worth three. If it, but if you go by eighty percent, then it would be two point six. You know. So well, I don't know. No, if it was three, then two point six would be more closer to eighty eight percent or so. Well, yeah. Anyway. Assuming A Rod can do this, and he can put together some money, people, and and he puts in, let's just throw a number out. Let's say, let's say he puts in forty million. Okay. All right. That's, That's of his own money. Still not a lot. It's it's not it's it's more than what Jeter put in for the Marlins. I'm not even sure what what percentage Jeter owns of the Marlins. By by cash value, he should own three percent. Right. But I'm pretty sure he owns closer to at least five, if not ten percent. <clears throat> because I think that was the trade off on 10. on name value. I don't think it's ten. I, I don't. I'm not, I don't think it's that much t- ten, but I know it's 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 more than three. You know, because because he is running the show, and and his face is on this franchise now uh, through all the failure that this team has had for the last couple seasons. Continue. Jeter, Jeter is is has been has been the target of of the fans who are angry about them getting rid of of players like Christian Yelich and Giancarlo Stanton and and right. selling off those guys. Now, the Marlins, at this point, are close to being, I don't even want to say a contender in that division, but they have a very good young rotation and fantasy players. You might want to take a look at Marlins pitchers on draft day. Um, They have some good young talent in the minor leagues that there are probably four to five guys in in the Marlins system who are probably a year or so away. So next year they'll, they'll be better, and in two years... They should really be a team that is about to, again, maybe not contend, but they'll be in the mix. So that's what Jeter had to do. Right. A Rod coming to the Mets, assuming this happens, and assuming they can put I this, don't this think together, it will, but it's a nicer dream. It, it's 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 kind of fun because just because he is a Rod and he is such a polarizing figure. But the other thing that that you have to remember here is Steve Cohen is still lurking. Yeah, he has $13 billion. Well, yeah, because I think what Cohen wants is – and, and here, here's the scenarios that, that, I've, that I've seen and that I've heard. The Wilpons want to throw this thing open, and they want, they want, they want guys bidding against each other. And, and they want this thing to get pushed past $3 billion. That's, that's what they think is going to happen. I think they're wrong. The, the only way that happens is if the Wilpons say goodbye as soon as the check is given But that, to is, that has been the condition that they put out there. This is why I don't understand why the Cohen thing didn't work. He's willing to put up $2.6 billion, and he was willing, I think, in, in some regards, to, to, to keep the Wilpons well, on. Part of it has to do with SNY, and that's, that's a major thing. That's well, where your money is made. But that's, that, that's part, I think that's going to be part of the purchase price. If, if the Wilpons are keeping SNY, I don't, I don't know who's the, going it, to buy the team, especially you, you for that price. You know what reminds me of, brother, I, I don't know if I've mentioned it last week or not, John Pickett, when he owned the Islanders, and I don't know if he still has the deal, but part of the deal when Charles Wong bought it was – Pickett still wanted to keep the TV money that um, it started out with Sports Channel, now it's MSG. Mm-hmm. The MSG contract, it's a thirty-five. it was a 35-year deal when the Islanders signed it. It's a huge amount of money. And John Pickett didn't want to let it go. And that's why you had those three guys running the team when they made it the, you know, the, um, the Gordon's Fisherman uh, logo because they said, oh, well, we've got to raise money somehow. 
And Pickett didn't want to give up that money. Now, I'm not sure if that, he got bought out finally by Wong or the, uh, the guys who own now. I'm not sure of that because no one talked about it. But that would be a question I'd want to know because as much as Pickett saved the Islanders, his, his greediness about this contract um, to destroy the team for 10 years. So, I mean, he would t- – remember he told Terry uh, – Terry O'Reilly. No, Terry O'Reilly. Mike Milberry? Mike, Mike Milberry. I'm thinking Terry O'Reilly. Happy to help, brother. Thank you. Mike, he told him, I don't want to spend more than our money we bring in. Exactly. Because, and that was the problem. That was right. why they couldn't sign anybody. Right. That was why they had to trade so many first-round draft picks because, yeah, that's why because Ziggy, they couldn't afford it. That's anybody. why Ziggy Palfia left when he shouldn't have. So, I mean, part of any team now is the network you own or the, the deal you get. It's like the Dodgers. The Dodgers signed a deal with Time Warner Cable, or the, whatever the local channel is out there. Right. And it's $5 billion over... I don't know how many but that, years. We, we $5 talk, billion. Dollars. We, we talked about this before. Is, and is they're that, not even on everywhere in L.A. Yeah, but we've talked about this before, is that the, the, the great thing about having your own TV network, if you're, a, if you're a franchise, is you can basically set the price in terms of, of what and, – and it's, it's just a number for tax purposes. Right. It's right. not like what you're actually getting. No, because it's taken so, – that... so you can set some astronomical figure, and then you can deduct that off of the tax, tax. – it's, 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 it's basically a way to dodge it's taxes. Like, it's like, here, here, let me take this $100 million out of my right pocket and put it in my left right. pocket. Exactly. It's so exactly it's, it's all kind of a con job, but that is why I, I, would, I, would, I would think – that when, if and when this deal gets done, that SNY will be part of the package. It has to be. Any, any person who would buy the Mets without SNY is an idiot. Because the deal, the way they can do it is uh, SNY can pay, usually will pay less money than the, the rights would actually, if there was competition for it. Right. So you pay, like I said, right pocket to left pocket. Yes. But if you don't own SNY, you're not making that money. Well, but here, here's so, the thing. Here's the thing that, that people need to know. Steve Cohen, again, like I said, lurking, because while the Wilpons think that giving up their demand for five years of control, which basically already has been dropped, it, it, then they think that you, you they, said it best last week. Jeffy can't walk away with his uh, two billion dollar check. He's, he, he's what, an idiot. That's, what, what, that's, he has no job. He can't go buy another. You don't need team. a job. You got two billion dollars. Who needs a job? Go go buy a minor league team. Go buy a double A team somewhere. Buy any team, any team you want. But the point being, Kansas City Royals. That no, they just they just got sold uh, last okay. year, so they're they're not up for sale again. Um, that Cohen, the reason that he's still curious, let's say. Is because he doesn't think that the bidding is going to go past the two point six billion well, valuation that he already offered. Who's that, well, they're going to solicit bids. I mean, I'm sure there are there are plenty of wealthy guys out there who who would love to say, "Hey, you know what? I want a piece of the Mets." Well, like I told you, who has? Or it's going to be groups like like a group put together by a Rod. Hello, Jimmy Dolan. Hello, well, MSG. I, I think that would be a disaster it, for New York sports fans. Well, it doesn't matter. They have the money. They don't. You know, I mean, the Wilpons don't care about being a disaster for New York sports fans. I'm just and, saying, and, and we don't, we don't, we don't know yet. And I don't want to talk about the, the Dolans too much because we don't know if because family members own the Cleveland Indians, the other side is that it. going to be an issue? So I don't even want to get into it because but we I, don't know. If if the Indians all of a sudden tomorrow were to be sold, hold it, don't don't give me that look. Then you know something uh, might be happening. Well, yeah, that if if that happens, then yeah, then or it's it's a big if. Or if uh, the commissioner goes to the Dolan family, you can only own one of these teams. Which one? Well, yeah, that's... I'm just saying. <laughs> you're, you're speaking the obvious here, brother. And the one you keep is the, New York. The point, the point being, though, that Cohen might, might wind up getting a discount because it, he's, he's banking on the bidding not going anywhere, and then he can swoop in and say, let's, let's, say, let's say Cohen's out of it and four or five other groups get involved and the, the numbers start getting thrown around and they, they wind up topping out at, let's say, $2.3 billion. Well, then you know what? Then, then Jeffy is making a phone call to Steve Cohen saying, hey, the 2.6 sounds pretty good. You want to do that again? I don't and, know. And then Cohen might, might look at him and say, hey, you know what? 2.4 sounds better to me. Well, and it still sounds better to you because it's still more than anybody else has offered you for it. So let's get well, this done. It, it better include SNY and a, and an escape hatch for, for Jeff and Fred. 
Maybe they can keep their box well, seats or something. Like I like, like I said, the, the five years of control has, has already been dropped. Yeah, so well, that, that's why, not even an why issue. why isn't the deal being That's what I don't know. Right that's, that's, that, 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 that is the issue that has me puzzled is if the, Met, if the Wilpons were willing to say, hey, you know what, that five-year thing, we don't need that anymore, then why didn't they just go back to – unless unless they are so stupid – that they think that they're there, that they saying, well, five years of control, we don't need that anymore. But they think that's worth another another half a billion dollars. I don't know. I, why, why would they put such an odious clause into if, a deal if, if, if they think that they can make five hundred billion dollars more or I'm sorry, five hundred million dollars more by by dropping all, it? All I know, brother, if I were the Wilpons. Ugh. And if, if this that was that would a make kid, me a will pawn. I would not uh, like that. Well, this is what I, I would like the say. Money, actually, uh, I would say to who's ever buying the team, we want to keep five percent. We won't run it. We just you want can't five five percent. Well, who's going to let him run it? No, but I'm, I'm just well, you know. Hey, sometimes agreements are made. Um, we don't. We just want to keep it for tax purposes at five percent, and that's what. But we don't know where that other twenty percent is. Seinfeld owns some of it. Bill Maher owns some right. of it. I would assume that that the Wilpons would keep a little, a small piece of it. I would assume so too. Because why wouldn't you? Right. So you know, again, you're talking hypotheticals that we that we aren't. Okay. Well, aren't we, let's sure get out of so, this. Let's talk about the good, Astros. Good luck. Good luck to A Rod. The Astros. Their their owner Jim Crane um, opened. What? What? You want to take a break? We're going to take a break? No, we're taking a break in half an hour, man. Since when? It's new. It's new. Now you're changing things on me without telling me. I change things, man. That's why I run the show. Anyway, Jim Crane, the owner, um, had a press conference the other day, trying to another another owner is for how how is it, brother? Trying to say, hey, you know what? Oh, that doesn't matter that we cheated. We how, oh, we cheated. Oh, you know what? Who cares? How how is it possible that idiots are billionaires and own own major league franchise? How is this possible? The Dolan, the, oh, not the, well, the Dolans are idiots too, but the Wilpons, well, they're rich as hell too. The, the Wilpons are idiots. Jim Crane comes to this press conference the other day and, and claims he actually said the words that he didn't think that the Astros cheating impacted results. Are you kidding? I don't know. He's Unbelievable. Had, to, to One me, of the worst takes I've ever heard in my life. The, the only way to really prove it is to actually show the banging of the garbage cans and then saying, okay, that meant it was a curveball, and then see if they got a hit. Off a curveball, I think that's the only way you can really prove a, it. A major league player, a major league hitter who knows what pitch is coming. I, I'm with a lot of a lot of other major leaguers who have said the same thing. I would rather have a guy on steroids. I'd rather be facing a guy on steroids than a guy who knows what pitch is coming. Well, a guy who knows what pitch is coming is a far more dangerous hitter than somebody taking steroids. I, th- I think what we're going to see down the road is maybe some players getting suspended. No, it's not going to happen. I, well, or at least mentioned or something because they had to give them immunity because they but, wanted but they, they wanted c- honest they wanted to but hear they honestly could still what happened. Name the people. You know, you it doesn't give, matter. But you can give immunity and still say, okay, you know, these ten players were in, involved with it. We, I mean, we already know a lot of the players who well, were involved. I mean, that's that's it's meaningless, that, and that that's the thing that that you know. Then after after Crane. Had his ridiculous press. And by the way, I want to I, I want to give credit um, to uh, ESPN reporter Marley Rivera because she asked the question. I, I was I was dying. I, I watched some of his press conference. I was dying when this guy was Crane was saying all this idiocy. Uh, she she pressed him on a follow up question toward, towards in fact pretty much right at the end of the press conference. Um, she said her question was, "Well, if it didn't impact anything, then why are you apologizing?" I agree. Crane stammered and stuttered and had no idea what to say because at that moment he knew what he said was so stupid that it was beyond words. And that was the perfect question to ask him. Why are you apologizing? Because what, what's the point of apologizing if it didn't, if it didn't impact anything? Perfect question. Thank you, Marley Rivera. Because I, I couldn't believe that the guy had the nerve to, to claim that there was no impact Look at how many look at how many home games the Astros won in 2017 against the Yankees in that series. They won every home game they played. So no impact. Well, Please stop with the lies. That's yeah. ridiculous. And the other thing, Rob Manfred, oh, the baseball commissioner. First of all, he's he's talking about 
He's There's making, too much. Too much is, is being focused on this. He, no, he it's not. Bud Selig looks smart. Uh, he said. He says that baseball will, will institute new rules to police the, the police the use of technology before this season. Uh, but his quote, it was ridiculous. He says, "I understand people's desire to have the players pay a price for what went on here." I think if you watch the players, watch their faces when they have to deal with this issue publicly, they have they have paid a price. To think they're skipping down the road into spring training happy, that's just a mischaracterization of where we are. Having said that, the desire to have actual discipline imposed on them, I understand it, and in a perfect world it would have happened. We ended up where we ended up in pursuit of really, I think, the most important goal of getting the facts and getting them out there for people to know it. Rob Manfred, I could not disagree with him more. Look at their faces. Are you kidding me? They, that is a, all, an, an, a, it's just an, a, an, an appalling take. Yeah, because yeah. you know what? They still have their World Series trophy. They still have the wins that they got. The wins that, that they got by basically illegal means. So, so to well, say... Well, also, brother, think about this. Excuse me for cutting you off, brother. But when they won the championship and they're jumping down up, up and down on the field... They were very, very happy. Yeah. yeah. They're still happy because they yeah. still have that title. And, and to sit here and say that, that they're, they're paying the price because they have to go through press conferences, I, you got to be kidding. That's just horrible. And, and I understand that, that you know, vacating a title is, is not going gonna, gonna to solve anything. Really, no. It's in, not. in in reality, it's not going to solve anything. The Astros, they still won the title. People are going going to know the title was tainted, and and there's only so much that you can do. But to sit here and and tell baseball fans that that these guys have paid any kind of price, no, they haven't. And and really, what what baseball probably should have done is not necessarily offer immunity, but ha- ha- they should have done a better investigation. First of all, there's there's. Very few players who will say that they didn't know what was going on. Of course, and they you might. could you could tell what was going. On. Gary Sanchez going out to the mound so many times against the Astros in 2017, it was because they knew the, the, the pitchers and the catchers knew that that the Astros were on their side. They just didn't know how. But when when you're when you're throwing fastballs on the black, and 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 they don't swing at it at all, and they're waiting for the off speed pitch. And and they have it timed perfectly. They know what's coming, of course. So and and even Kurt Suzuki from uh, from the Nationals last year, he he said he was going out to the mound a lot, and and, and the pitchers knew and and he knew he says something's going on, but they have our signs, and we they they kept they changed the signs every inning because of this. So again, it goes back to Jim Crane. No impact. You got forget it. It's a joke. How do you say something that 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 audacious? And, and that ignorant, I, I, this is a major league owner. You're supposed to have the best interests of the game at heart. And, and to tell a lie like that is you know, just disgusting. Jim Crane, um, you know, they suspended Steinbrenner for outrageous things. Why not well, suspend that Crane? That was political contributions and so Ill, that was genuinely illegal this, activity. Yeah, but you know what? I'm not a fan of Steinbrenner, but what he did was was... Well, well, we won't say it's equal, but it's we'll say it's similar in the fact that Crane is destroying the game of baseball or allowing it to be destroyed. If he well, knew, which obviously he had to have known eventually. I'll tell you what. I would not be averse to Major League Baseball putting a a security person, for lack of a better term, but basically basically a babysitter and, and say, all right, you know what? You can't go into this area during a game, or you can't look at video. First of all, I want somebody looking looking over the center field fence and trying to find cameras and making sure that there's nothing going on like that, because that was the the main thing was was they had a camera pointed right at the catcher so that they could find the signals. Right. So I want so I want somebody in, you know, in a in a dugout or in a in a in a in a clubhouse or you know, there's the hallway from the clubhouse to the dugout. I want somebody patrolling that area. Because I don't, ha- I don't have a problem with guys looking at film during games. Because if they're looking at their own at bat or something, they want to try and figure out, you know, what are, what are they doing wrong? If somebody's in a slump or something, I don't have a problem with that. But I do have a problem with banging on garbage pails to tell guys what pitch is coming. That's that's a really big problem. 
So that needs to be addressed and, and that needs to be corrected. And, and Manfred claims that that's going to happen. But let's also not forget that they're still investigating the Red Sox. And, and that case, that, that, that decision Manfred claims is going to come by the end of the month. So there, there's, going to be, there's going to be more penalties doled out. And, and, and we're going to see eventually in the next, in the next couple of weeks, I mean, he, you know, before, certainly before the season, there's going to, going to be a new policy in terms of what, what technology, how much, how much help teams can get from technology. But I think, I think there's going to be maybe not a complete banishment, but there's going to be a limit as far as what teams are able to do and, and what kind of technology you can have in the, in the bench area or in the, in the, in the uh, dugout area. That that's that's the bare minimum that that MLB can do. I I, I think it should but be even more. Harsh. They should be doing a lot more. That's they should be doing a lot more. Absolutely. So it's, it's I, I hope thing. they do. We're gonna take a break right now. You're listening to ninety point three WHPC from the press box, right here on the Voice of Nassau Community College. If you have a comment or question, give us a call, 516-572-7440. All hit music. For all those songs radio has forgotten about, join me, Big Ed, Mondays from 10 a.m. till noon for the Good Gold Show. We'll bring back all the great hits of the 50s, 60s, 70s, and more. The sounds of doo-wop to disco, all the Motown soul and great rock and roll. We'll even take your requests and dedications to the Good Gold Show. Music. On the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC and streaming on the iHeartRadio app. Saturday Night Fever. Polyester Suits. The Brady Bunch. Bell Bottom Jeans. And the music of the 70s. Not three times on the ceiling if you want me. Join me, Ron Stevens, on the radio Saturday mornings at 7 a.m. for two hours of the decade of Elton John, the Eagles, and disco. The Super 70s, the 70s at 7, Saturday mornings on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Shake off the realities of the day, broaden your musical horizons, and embrace the diversity every Monday afternoon at 5 for two hours of Revelations. The show offers a potently unique collection of music with an emphasis on themes and rock rarities, an occasional tour de force of blues and soul mixed with compelling sets of folk and folk rock. I'm Steve Kay, and I've got the perfect soundtrack for your drive home every Monday afternoon at 5 on Revelations, right here on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. 90.3 WHPC, the voice of Nassau Community College. Welcome back to From the Press Box. I'm Rob Leonard. He's Tim Leonard. By the way, brother, I know you're interested in this. Piano Man every Sunday afternoon at 3 p.m. Love that show. Where else but on Long Island would you find a radio show devoted to the music of Long Island's own Billy Joel? Hosted by the mayor, Chris Muldoon, he digs deep into Billy's catalog, includes live performances, interviews, demos, and covers. If you love Piano Man, you'll love Piano Man. That's every Sunday at 3 p.m. right here at 90.3 WHPC. Um, quickly, i got to brother... get him to play Miami 2018 next show. 17. 17. That's what I meant. It's a new version. Yes, I know. <laughs> um, quickly, the uh, Islanders, uh, they acquired Andy Green from the Devils for 2021 second-round pick and minor leaguer David Quenneville? Quenneville. Quenneville. Uh, Green, you know, they, they needed an offensive guy, not a defensive guy, but he's a solid defensive guy, uh, one-time captain of the Devils, and uh, Lou Lamorello... Obviously knows him from his time with the Devils. So absolutely, um, I'll go with this. We need an offensive player, though. That's, but at the same time, the Islanders. You know, this is the year that not, you have to get to the finals this year, really. Um, but right I don't now, think, I don't think that. I mean, unless right now, unless not. they make another trade, 
Yeah, they need and another trade. They need a goal scorer. But yeah, unless that happens, then then the Islanders, I, you know, I don't. I could see them going to the second round, but I, I, think, I think the Capitals are, are are better than they are, even though they beat the Capitals last week. And I'm, I'm if, as long as Sidney, Sidney Crosby stays healthy, I think the Penguins are better than the Islanders. So, yep, get going, Lou. Yeah, so you got work to do. We'll see what uh, what Lou does. Yeah. He's been good so far. It's very quiet. You know, he's, he's not a noisy guy. Don't want quiet. Want moves. I want moves. I want a, I want a couple of deals. Either 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 make moves or tell me why we're not making moves. If, if there are guys in in the minor leagues and, and players who are developing, who who Lamarillo says, all right, these guys are, are the future of the franchise, then let us know that, and and tell us because I think fans are going to be more forgiving. For if, if if there are you know let's face it, there are names in the minor leagues that most fans don't know, right, right? And if you talk about these guys, they'll just say, "Well, trade whoever you have to trade to get player A," you know, like Kreider from the Rangers, good player, but would help. But right. what do you have to give up for him? And if you say, "Well, the Rangers wanted this guy, and we know that in two years he's going to be at worst a second line right wing for us, and he's going to score thirty five goals." Well, you know, maybe you don't want to put that kind of pressure on the kid, but at least it tells the fans, "Hey, this guy is our future, and we're not giving him up for a rental, right? To uh, to, to do a one year, you know, a one year push for for the cup. This is, well, you know, we're trying to build a long term thing here. Uh, of course, you know, things can happen in between, brother. You know, you know that. You well, know. you know, I think of Steve Balboni for years was you know the up and coming Yankee guy, and you know then Mattingly comes along. <laughs> Takes that spot over, He's basically. And Balboni never really lived up to his, his, his I don't want to say hype because it was the wrong term, because he seemed like a decent guy. He wasn't like he was out there hyping himself. But, you know. Balboni, yeah. Balboni was a good player, but he was, he was, you know, he was a serviceable first baseman. He was a right. power hitter. He wasn't, wasn't much of an average. Uh, big guy, didn't have a lot of mobility around the bag. Don Mattingly was a late-round draft pick. And and he showed very early in the minor leagues that he could hit. So they brought him up. He he actually started as an outfielder. Right, I remember. That. So then they moved him to first base, and all of a sudden it's like, hey, we're going to one of the best first basemen in baseball. This guy's a gold glove, gold glove defensive player, and and he's going to bat three thirty and hit thirty five, forty home runs. Yeah, you know, it's and, like the it's like the Yankee, um, you know, shortstop in Triple A, you know, during the Jeter years. And that guy had no shot. Yeah, never. Tr- yeah. Time to trade. Yeah, but that's but that's you know when when you have somebody like a Derek Jeter, right? You you don't have to go. You know, you don't have to pick. And I, I know a lot of GMs like to pick shortstops because typically in in especially in the high school ranks, shortstops are the best athletes on a team. So if you pick that player, chances are he'll be able to. He'll, he's athletic enough to move to another position, if need be. But like you know, like the Yankees right now, they're not worried about a right fielder, no, and and they're not, not necess- sure they're not necessarily worried about a shortstop because they expect Labor Torres to be that guy. So and and they're I mean they've they've picked a couple of catchers in in recent years, but I, I don't think that they're really too worried about Gary Sanchez unless unless they're going to be willing to let Gary Sanchez walk when he becomes free agent. But you know they picked it, I think it was two years ago they picked catchers in the first and second rounds, which was mind boggling, but that's you know, that's what I'm talking about here. And the Yankees have a couple of outfielders in the minor leagues. They have this one kid, uh, Jason what was his last name? Rodriguez, I think it is. They signed him as a sixteen year old, gave him five million dollars. And they're already making comparisons to Mike Trout. Okay. Which is kind of ridiculous. But if this kid has any anything resembling Trout's ability, then he's gonna be a star. But five million dollars for a sixteen year old. Not bad. Let's talk about Manchester City in the uh, How about that, bro? Oof. European League, brother. And the reason I say that is because we were just talking about the Astros. And these guys <laughs> Cheaters. Are, these That's guys, the common theme. These guys have been kicked out of their league. Well, they've been, sent they've to been, the lower league. No, 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 no. no? no let's no, no, let's, let's okay, correct well, that because well, that's, that's an error, brother. Okay. Uh, they have been suspended from competition for two years by UEFA for violating the financial fair play rules. Uh, that means they can't participate in the Champions League. So they're not, they're not getting suspended from the Premier League. That's, that's their, their domestic competition. But the Champions League is the league where the best of the best play. 
Like that's the top four in England go to the Champions League. Uh, the top uh, three in, in the Spanish League go to the Champions League. Same thing for Italy. It's it's the best of the best around a, the it's world. A, it's a floating crap game, in right? Many well, ways. it's it's floating because you have to qualify. You have to requalify every year. Like like Tottenham last year got to the Champions League final. That means nothing for this year. Right now, Tottenham is in fifth place, and now if if Manchester City if their if their suspension um, winds up winds up sticking, for lack of a better term, because they are appealing. Uh, but if it sticks, then the, then the fifth-place team from the Premier League will wind up going to the Champions League because Manchester City won't, won't be allowed to play. So, obviously, that helps Tottenham. Like I said, they're now in, as far as I know, they're in fifth place. Uh, but it, it's, you know, it, it's something that I'm glad to see happen because a lot of teams have been cooking their books for – several years, ever since financial fair play came into into being. And the reason that it came into being was because there was probably about half a dozen or 10 or so teams around the world that just spent whatever they wanted to spend. And when when that sort of sort of thing happened, it damages the game. Because if you have if you have clubs that, that have limitless amounts of money to spend on players, well, yeah, they're going to get the best players. So you have to you have to give, but that every doesn't mean team. they're going to win every year. Or you know, the Yankees it give it gives you a much better chance. It does, to but win. the Yankees it's been ten years since they. Won I, the World I, I I hundred percent agree with what you're saying there, and 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 anybody who wants to can point to uh, a, f- a few years ago in the Premier League when Leicester wound up winning the title, Un- as unexpected as anything that has ever happened in sports. Probably even more unexpected than the U.S. winning the hockey gold medal in 1980. You know, the 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 odds. I still remember the the one thing I always remember: the odds of Leicester winning the Premier League that season were the same as Kim Kardashian becoming the president of the United States. Wow, that was five thousand to one. So, and you know, the sad part is someone probably put a bet on it. Well, there were a few people did actually. A few Leicester fans. If you put twenty twenty quid, as they like, no, I'm to say, talking about on on Kim Kardashian. Oh well, that would be stupid. No. But she is going to law school, so maybe maybe she's preparing. Um, so Manchester City is one of those teams because they're owned by you know the, they're owned by the the Sheikh, right. the Sheikh well, whoever he is, un, unlimited oil money, and and they have no qualms about spending whatever needs to be spent now. The financial fair play basically says that what you bring in from what your revenue is from ticket sales, uh, concessions, you know, like merchandise, all that stuff, you can't spend a certain percentage above that. So it's supposed to be whatever you bring in, that's what you can spend. And, And that's fair because then the biggest clubs in the world, they'll still be able to spend plenty of money, but you can't spend unlimited amounts of money. Because, you know, Manchester United is a popular team. They sell a lot of merchandise. I'm sure they do. You know, the same goes for Barcelona and Real Madrid, two of the most popular teams in the world. But there has to be a limit. I'm sure. And and if you're going to bring in a player for, you know, $100 million, pounds, whatever, then, you know, you're going to have to sell another player. Because you can't just keep collecting nine, you know, nine-figure players and and have that be fair to everybody. So, you know, UEFA the, the they had the investigation. UEFA ruled that that City Man, Man City had committed serious breaches of the regulations by overstating its sponsorship revenue in its accounts and in the break even information submitted to UEFA between 2012 and 2016. So that's 5 years worth of submissions. Um, besides being banned for, from European competition for the next two seasons. And that's Champions League, that's Europa League, that's, that's everything. I mean, they won't be involved in European competitions. Um, but they were also fined uh, the, the equivalent of $32.5 million uh, by UEFA. It's, it's uh, actually 30 million euros, is for, for those of you who want to do some math there. Um, but, again, this is a big deal because there are other teams that probably are looking over their shoulders right now. And, and I, w- I would be surprised if Manchester City is the only team that winds up with this sort of suspension because there there are other teams and other clubs around the world who are doing this. And, and, and I, I personally, I would love it if they got suspended, if there were more suspensions after this, because this was the whole reason 
why you know why financial fair play came came into being in the first place is 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 to to limit this sort of thing and to make it so that it's not the same teams winning all the time. Because then, what's the point? If, if if you can't if you can't root for a team in sports because well, I know the highest they're going to finish is fourth place, or or I know my team will never make it past the, the group stage in the Champions League. What's the point? It, it, you're, you're defeated before the before the before the competition even starts. Well, maybe some of these leagues have too many teams, as I think all the teams in the United States do. You know, I mean, the leagues. You know, there's 30 baseball. Uh, teams as what, 32 football teams. You know, it's, you know to me, there's it's only too many, te- almost too many teams. Well, yeah, but but your examples. Some some of them, the, the owners are happy to make you know their ten million dollars and go home. Your examples, brother. Though, in 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 the NFL, for example, they have a salary cap. You can't exceed the salary right. cap in the NFL. Yeah, it's so it's fair. Salary, it's hard salary cap, and it's actually very unfair to the players. But it's it's fair <coughs> to the competition, Excuse which is which is the the main concern. Yeah, no. It's it, you know it, it it puts every team on equal footing, whereas in 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 international football, if you have one team spending if their if their roster to assemble their roster it costs them eight hundred million pounds, but you have another team that their roster costs them one hundred and fifty. Well, you know that's that. There's nothing fair about that. And you're going to have that in sports. I understand that. As, as a Yankee fan especially, I understand that. You're always going to have teams like, like the Yankees and the Dodgers and, right. and, and uh, the Red Sox and, and even the Cubs are, are right, right, right at that, that level. And there's, there's a handful more. But at least there's some sort of, of mechanism in place in baseball to say, all right, you know what? We, we need to make it so that everybody can have some sort of a chance. And, and they have a way to put, to put to put together a team that could win. And in 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 international soccer slash football, it doesn't exist that way for a lot of teams, because just because of the financial right, impossibility. Right, right, right. There are some teams that they play in a thirty thousand seat stadium over there. How are you going to raise money with ticket ticket sales? You can't. You know, Manchester City, Manchester United plays in an eighty thousand seat stadium every week. You know, if you play in the LA Coliseum, you know it's even you know, better. But you know, right depends on depends on the team and support. So, um, but and you know, we good, should good, say good for you, Wafer. We should say it was uh, All Star Weekend in the NBA this weekend. Indeed, um, it's interesting because uh, it's on purpose that they have this weekend because of presidents. Say, by the way, uh, we're happily celebrating the first forty four presidents. Yes, uh, here on the show. Um, anyway, uh, if you think about it. Um, they want to change the the Super Bowl so it comes the day after. I mean, the day before President's Day, so everyone can stay home on that unofficial Monday. Um, but if it's going to be NBA weekend, um, you know, then it's like, okay, you can't have both. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, you know, do what you can. It, it's. I mean, I understand. It's a whole weekend. It, it's a whole. Um, you know the, the NBA. The NBA puts on a good show. And what and, was and the I, deal? And I, and I thought, I thought, I thought, I liked, I liked the changes that they made in the game this year. I, 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 it was a game. I, yeah, I know. It was a real game. I was watching it, and, and literally, guys are taking like giant steps because they didn't want to dribble. And well, I'm like, they do that in regular games. No, but this too. was like, this was like walking almost. Euro step is what it's called. Man. Oh my god, it was just horrible. And I, I, I really thought it was, you know, Team LeBron against. You against know. Team Yanish. Yeah. Yeah. They picked they picked the teams. I, I I liked what happened. And and you know, we'll talk about we'll talk about a little bit about the game. I just I want to talk a little bit about the weekend and just get, get some of that. Um Bam Adebayo of the Miami Heat, he won the skills competition. Good for Bam. Uh Buddy Heald of the Sacramento Kings edged Devin Booker of the Phoenix Suns in the three point contest. And Buddy Heald made his last shot at the buzzer to win the three point competition. So good for Buddy. Uh, and Derek Jones Jr., very, very controversial. We got a phone call, won brother. The slam dunk competition, bro. Steve from Oceanside. What do you have to Steve, say, Steve? Talk to us, Steve. Hey, good morning, gentlemen. How hey, are I you, just, Steve? I, I, I could have sworn I overheard you say that uh, you're celebrating uh, President's Day for the first 44 presidents. My brother Uh-oh. said that. He did. Yes. Uh, what, what? I, I, was just, I was just wondering why, what, why you omitted number 45. I don't know. We, because we, he destroyed the Daytona 500 yesterday. He destroyed the 500. Come on, man. <laughs> 
It rained all I mean, day I, afterwards. I, I enjoy listening to you, man, but the politics isn't necessary. We, you know what I mean? we barely do politics, Steve, but thanks for calling in. We appreciate it. All right. Have a good Keep day. us on our toes. Take care, Steve. Anyway. Anyway, brother. The slam dunk competition. Derek Jones Jr., the Miami Heat. Right. First of all, I want to say, Aaron Gordon made one of the three best dunks I've ever seen in my life. Okay. Off the sideboard, 360 spin, kind of scooped it from, from below and came an unbelievable dunk. And he lost. <laughs> well, the one that won didn't look like it was a big, it, it, it was the one, okay, but it wasn't. The winning, dunk, the winning, winning. dunk was a dunk that Derek Jones Jr. First of all, don't get me wrong. I, I personally, I would have given them both a trophy. I thought they put on a great show. It was, it was phenomenal as far as I'm concerned. Aaron Gordon not winning after jumping over Taco Fall. Do you know who Taco Fall is, brother? Sure. Seven foot five. I'm not even going to comment on the pants that Taco Fall was wearing because those were a disaster. Those were something out of Charles Oakley's closet. And, and you know, when you're seven foot five, if you're wearing something that looks that bad, it's on purpose because he's seven foot five. Yeah, you, he's you, not shopping at J.C. Penney. Well, J.C. Penney has a look big, large. Not, not for seven five. He jumps over Taco Fall and dunks. Now, Derek Jones Jr., his comment was, well, he kind of clipped Taco Fall. All right, yeah, he clipped him a little bit. He's seven five. <laughs> he still jumped over him and dunked. I, I I don't even understand. Now the problem came. This was on the second dunk off because they had tied. They both got fifties in in in, uh, in in the final. So this was their second dunk off dunk. Jones had gotten a forty eight. He went first. He got a forty eight. Gordon jumps over Taco Fall, and he winds up getting a forty seven. And the basic reason he got the 47 was because the judges can't add. And Candace Parker, w, former WNBA star, right. she admitted as much because she said afterwards that they wanted to give Gordon a 48 for jumping over Taco Fall because they wanted a third dunk off. And I don't know who screwed it up, but one of the judges gave him a 9 when he should have given him a 10. And... The fans in Chicago hated it. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely hated it. Um, Aaron Gordon afterwards said he's done with dunk contests because something similar happened to him a couple of years ago. He was dunking against Zach Levine, and it was a similar situation where Gordon probably should have won the contest, and Levine wound up winning. And, and again, another contest where both guys put on a ridiculous show. But... Uh, I, I, I'm I'm a little puzzled here by by you know how how you know the judges Dwayne Wade Common Chance the Rapper oh I'm sorry um no Dwayne Wade Scotty Pippen Chadwick Boseman uh, Candace Parker and Common were the five judges these people can't add to ten no I, I, I don't get it you know, I mean come on it, it shouldn't be that difficult but they should have given them both a trophy I I, I don't I don't apparently the NBA didn't want to do that, and eventually somebody would have had to win. But how does Aaron how does Aaron Gordon get four perfect dunks in a row and wind up losing the competition? I don't get it. I don't know either. So, I, I, I look at it, it's like, okay, you know, I like it. You know, I, you know it's interesting. TNT and, and TBS had two separate feeds of the same game. Right. And, they were, you know, they were doing it differently, so it was kind of – Interesting. You know, they they should have. Do they have a um a, like a alumni game, so to speak? You know? No, no. See, they, too many old dudes, brother. I'd like to see like Barkley out there. You know? Oh, forget it. Chuck's not doing that. Yeah, Are you yeah. kidding me? Yeah. Or, or you know, you do with him. You know, you throw him out there. Chuck maybe, put on weight, brother. He's maybe, put on weight. Maybe a maybe a game of horse. You know. You know, they the they Barclays. tried that, they tried that a few years ago. They had a WNBA player and an, and, a, and an NBA old yeah, timer. I saw that, yeah. And it didn't go over well. No. So you know they were they That's were something. they were trying to make shots. They they're not going to do that with old timers because because I mean, what's what good is it going to be with with Shaq going up and down the court, or or Barkley? I mean, neither one of these guys can run. They're old and they're fat. Well, that'd be so fun. no, it's not fun. There's <laughs> nothing fun about it. Well, a game of horse could be. Worked out. Though. I don't. Know. I don't think. I don't think. I don't think wanna. you lose your, your your eye. You just lose you the fact I, I, you can't I don't, run. I don't think fans want to watch a game of horse. Horses is, is is not. It's not a fun game to watch. No, it, it can be. It can be. It depends on. It depends on how you do it. 
if you can do it like a McDonald's commercial with yeah, Larry Bird yeah. and, and Magic Johnson, then yeah, it's, then it's fun because they're bouncing, bouncing, well, bouncing good? shots off the roof and you know doing stuff like that. But you know it, it, they, that's not real life. <laughs> Well, I, I uh, have I would have had no problem with that. Anyway, uh, Magic Johnson uh, was at the game also remembering David Stern and, and of course, uh, Kobe Bryant. The MVP award for the All-Star game was uh, renamed for Kobe, which I thought was a pretty touching thing. Yeah, he won it four times, so, yeah, it's, so. it's a good, a good award to, to, to dedicate to him. And they didn't wait a, a year to do it. They did it right away, so um, that's a, a very cool thing, and um, it was just, you know, it, it, these games aren't fun to watch, you know? They're just, just... I'm, I have to disagree with you, brother. This oh. game was fun to watch, yeah. and it was because of how they structured it, um, what, what they call the Elam ending. I don't know who Elam is. Don't ask me. I have no idea. Um, but after the third quarter, Team Yanish was leading Team LeBron 133 to 124. Now, it was whichever team, it was, it was Team Yanish. They added 24 points in honor of Kobe Bryant, and so that meant that the target number was 157. Right. So that was whoever scored, whoever got the 157 first wins. So it was, there was no commercials, no timeouts, no. It was just play ball. So you wind up with with guys playing, and they they were they were playing defense. Kyle Lowry drew two charges in an All Star game. Yeah. They were blocked shots. Giannis blocked two two shots in, late in the game. These guys were going after it. So I I thought that was great, and I thought that was I also thought it was a, it was a great tribute to Kobe because Kobe always played. Anytime Kobe laced up his sneakers, he was like, you know, hey, I'm here to win. I don't care what it is. I don't care if I'm if I'm playing playing in, in the NBA Finals or if I'm playing against twelve year olds. I'm here to win. Well, yeah. So that was a nice tribute in that regard. That. Everybody was there, not not just to goof around, not not to to you know to throw crazy alley oop passes or, or or chuck thirty footers for three pointers. They actually were there to, to win a basketball game, and that, right. that and, was and that was a nice and, a nice tribute. You know, you know the overhanging of Kobe's death is you know you can tell some of the players were you know de- definitely touched, and uh, no, they probably they probably knew Kobe. I mean, he probably knew everyone. What yeah. I'm about. So. And our man, Cousin Kawhi, got the MVP award. Cousin Kawhi Leonard. Scored 30, including 8 for 14 from three-point range. So, 25 in the first half for Cousin Kawhi. Nice job. So c- congratulations. And uh, also, uh, uh, the XFL has a little bit of controversy this week. Uh, Matt McGloin. McGloin. Uh, McGloin. I was thinking of Rhyme, the actor. Rhymes with McGloin. I'm thinking of the actor. He's in the, the Geico commercials. Um, he's already complaining about the league. Uh, a little behind the scenes stuff that um they're trying to stay away from they don't want to be the x f l of fifteen years ago where you know Jesse the body is one of the announcers, and you know the implication that the players are sleeping with the cheerleaders he he, he went Matt McGloin went all all rowdy roddy piper on right. on his coach claims claims that there's stuff going on behind the scenes that needs to be cleaned up Only matt McGloin, Matt McGloin was a third round a third third uh, string quarterback for the right. Oakland Raiders. Okay. He's not going to get back to the, to the league no. talking like this. No, no, he's not. <laughs> anyway, that just about does it for From the Press Box. I'm Rob Leonard. You are Tim Leonard. This will be up as, on Spreaker.com later as a podcast. Coming up next, Big Ed Newlands with Good Gold, all the good songs and great songs that really don't get played on the radio anymore. Ed's going to play them for you, so keep it tuned here to WHPC. Take care and bye-bye. The views expressed on air are not necessarily those of WHPC, its management, or Nassau Community College. Responsible opposing viewpoints will be considered by emailing them to whpc at ncc.edu or by mail at whpc One Education Drive, Garden City, New York, 11530. Thanks for listening to the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC.